The Xbox Duke was the very first Xbox controller. It was enormous. It was ridiculous. It was one of the biggest controllers ever made. Some people loved it. Many people hated it. It was from another time. A time where bigger was always better. Anyway, the Duke is back, and I never expected to see this controller again. In fact, when they debuted the original Xbox in Japan, the Japanese hated this controller so much that they had to develop a new controller just for the Japanese market. Eventually, the gamepad they made for the Japanese replaced the Duke in all territories, which most people were very happy about. Inside the box, you get the Duke and a 9-foot USB cable, which seems generous at first, until you realize this controller is not wireless. That, that cable is not a charging cable. This is a wired controller for $70. You're getting a wired controller based on a failed design from 2001. The fact that this controller is 70 bucks and wired is a really hard pill to swallow. <laughs> they put an OLED screen in the controller, but they couldn't put a battery in it. Which is ironic, really, considering how goddamn big this thing is. It is really comfortable, though, which is why I've always loved this gamepad. The updated Xbox original, that was the guest controller. This one, this one was mine. It feels just like it did back in 2001. They did make a change, however, with the black and white jewel buttons. Those are now tied to the bumpers. So they added bumpers. They did add a quality of life change, but for the most part, the controller is exactly as it was. Honestly, this feels like a first-party controller, even though it's Hyperkin. Uh, if I'm being honest, the analog stick placement does feel a little odd in 2018, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> I'd rather have authenticity, which is what we got. For most people, this probably isn't gonna be worth it, because you're basically just getting an overfed, wired Xbox One controller. No, this controller is more marketed to the nostalgic, overgrown man-children like myself that buy expired food off of eBay just to fuel their will to live a little longer. With the addition of the bumpers and the guide buttons, this now has everything an Xbox One controller has, with one exception. The big thing in the middle, which used to be a picture with the Xbox logo, is now an OLED screen. And when you press that OLED screen, the original Xbox boot up plays. Whenever you press it, you can press it 500 times, it'll just play it over and over and over again. It's beautiful. Anyway, before we get to that, here's the Duke compared to a PS4 controller. It's almost comical, the size of this thing. You could kill a small animal easily. Just bludgeon him with it. This thing is basically a sledgehammer without the handle. Even compared to the N64 controller, the Duke still reigns supreme in mass. What used to be a giant plastic picture in the middle of the controller is now an OLED screen. They, they put an OLED screen inside of a controller just so whenever you press that big ass button, you get the original Xbox startup sequence. This is completely ridiculous. It's outrageous. It's masturbatory. It's, it's amazing. Oh, also the bottom of the controller has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is nice. You can't obviously plug in a keyboard to this controller like you can the Xbox One controller, but you can press that button as many times as you want. And it's just, it's just gonna play the same thing over and over again. And there's no way to turn off the OLED screen, so you're always gonna have that Xbox light shining at you, if you're, especially if you're playing at night, it's, it's really obvious. But yeah, you've, uh, you've got a $70 controller with an OLED screen. It's enormous, much bigger than it needs to be and it's not wireless. So this is not a controller for everybody. It works fine, it works just as an Xbox One controller does. I've played with it for a couple of hours, and it's as comfortable as I remember it being. But the analog stick placement is a little stranger than I remember that being. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's a really nice throwback. It's nice to have a larger controller for larger hands like my own, but is it worth 70 bucks when it's not even wireless? <laughs> no, it's not gonna be worth that to most people, just nostalgic man children like me. The triggers feel, the triggers actually feel really good. The buttons feel great. They look just like they did back in the day. The analog sticks click, of course, honestly, 
Again, you're not getting anything more here than you would with an Xbox One controller aside from the size and the screen. But that's not why you buy the Duke, you buy the Duke for the statement. I don't care how butt ugly my fat ass controller is, I want to be comfy. Anyway, I think this thing is cool as hell, aside from being wired, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. It's a controller with a screen in it, and it's enormous. It's the Humvee of Xbox controllers. 